Hi everybody and welcome to Love Fraud Live. I'm Donna Anderson, author of lovefraud.com. Tonight we're going to be talking about dangerous dating relationships. The best way to escape a controlling or abusive relationship is to get out before you are emotionally hooked. But how can you tell when a new romantic partner may turn into a problem partner? This is a live streaming show and I'll answer this question in my presentation. I'll also answer any of your questions at the end. So please go ahead and send your questions to me by chat as we go along. Okay, so let's get started. If you're single and looking for a companionship, here's the best I can give you, best advice I can give you. Never date a sociopath. Now, by sociopath, I mean someone who could be diagnosed with antisocial, narcissistic, borderline, histrionic, or psychopathic personality disorder. Now, these people do not have the ability to authentically love you, but they can be really good at faking it, at least in the beginning of a relationship. So given that sociopaths can often appear to be normal and attractive, how can you spot them? I've written about the red flags of love fraud, the signs that your partner is a sociopath, but often it takes time to see some of those signs in your relationship. Your goal is not to get deeply involved with a sociopath in the first place. So here are 13 very early warning signs that may forewarn you about the possibility of abusive behavior later on. Number one, your partner monopolizes your time. You're spending all your free time with your partner, perhaps seeing him or her every day. If you spend any time with someone else, like even your family or your best friend, your partner seems to be hurt, annoyed, or even angry. Number two, your new partner constantly calls and texts you. You may get calls and texts 24 seven, even if you're also spending a lot of time with this person. And if you don't respond immediately, your partner demands to know why. Well, this is a serious warning. Number three, your new partner plays for your sympathy. He or she may talk about an abusive childhood, a scheming boss, a terrible previous romantic partner. This warning sign is especially relevant. If he or she tells you that a previous partner was cheating, abusive, or mentally unbalanced, these are very common accusations from abusers. Number four, your partner overreacts to a trivial or non-existent incident. He or she becomes angry or sullen over nothing at all, or accuses you of saying something or doing something that didn't happen. Number five, your partner is worked up and says it's your fault. During a discussion or argument, your partner is combative and says, you made me say it, or you made me do it, or you made me crazy, or something like that. If your partner blames you for his or her behavior, this is a classic controller technique. Number six, early on, your partner buys you extravagant gifts. Perhaps you've only been dating for a short time but he or she buys you expensive jewelry or electronics or offers you money, and it just doesn't feel appropriate. This may be an attempt to make you feel indebted to him or her, which is another form of control. Number seven, you see a sudden flash of nastiness that seems out of character. Maybe it's not directed towards you. Perhaps your partner is rude to a waiter. If your partner has been treating you like gold and suddenly see, you see a mean streak, well, perhaps what's happened is that his or her mask has slipped and you've seen what's behind it. 
Number eight, where did that come from? Suppose your partner says or does something negative and your immediate reaction is, huh? Where did that come from? If you are ever shocked by your partner's behavior for any reason, do not overlook your reaction. Number nine, all of your interactions are on your partner's terms. You spend time at your partner's house, with your partner's friends, with your partner's family, and doing what your partner wants to do. You never seem to get around to doing what you want to do. And then if your partner finally does agree to do what you want, he or she makes the experience so miserable that you never ask again. This is not a balanced relationship. Number 10, your partner starts to criticize you. In the beginning, he or she was constantly telling you how wonderful you are. And now your partner is finding things about you to criticize. Although the criticisms may be presented in the context of helping you grow or for your own good. Yeah, romantic partners are supposed to be supportive, but if you end up feeling demeaned or beaten down, he or she may have started to chip away at your self-confidence. Number 11, your partner physically assaults you, even if it doesn't hurt. Now this one is major, 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 major. If your partner shoves, hits, scratches, or chokes you, even lightly, you should assume that he or she is testing you. Your partner may claim it was an accident and he or she didn't mean it and it will never happen again. Actually, your partner may be taking the first steps towards training you to tolerate physical abuse. Number 12, your partner pushes your sexual boundaries. He or she may make suggestions or demands that you just find uncomfortable, all in the name of fantasy or excitement. Well, it could just be the beginning of uncomfortable demands and the depravity of the demands may escalate. Finally, number 13, you feel drained. Perhaps your partner is demanding and although the demands are hidden in the context of wanting to spend time with you, perhaps you feel like you're constantly defending yourself. Whatever the reason, this relationship is leaving you feeling drained. Now keep in mind that what controllers do is suck the life out of you. Okay, so those are 13 early warning signs of a dangerous relationship. I'm almost finished with the presentation, so if you have any questions for me, now please go ahead and send them along now. And if you're watching this video after the live stream, ask your question in the Love Fraud Forum where it's posted. There's a link in the description below. So, if you're in the early stages of a relationship and you see the warning signs that we just talked about, what should you think? What, what should you do? You may be inclined to interpret overly attentive behaviors to mean that your new partner is truly smitten with you. Or if you see some nastiness, you may feel like you should cut the person some slack because we all have bad days, we all have wounds, we all have baggage. So how do you know if one of these episodes is just a bad day or a serious warning. Listen to your instincts. If you have a nagging intuition or a bad feeling that there is something wrong with the person or the involvement, and you also see these behaviors, consider yourself warned. Most importantly, act on the warning and end your involvement. This is the crucial thing. The sooner you get out, the safer you will be. Okay, that's the presentation. Let's see if we have some questions. Take a look. Donna, is there anywhere I can get your books on audio? Um, that's something that we're 
looking to do in the future. I uh, just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, my understanding, or some readers have told me that if you buy the book on Kindle, you can set it on audio and it will just read it to you. Uh, probably sounds like a computer voice, but my understanding is that it, it works reasonably well. Um, we will be doing audio books in the future. It's just one of those projects. I've got so many things that I'm working on and hopefully we'll get to that soon. All right. Um, Karen says, my ex told me he was going to sleep with all my female friends. I thought he was kidding and he wasn't. You know, it, when they actually tell you what they are, who they are, and what they're going to do, and we, we can't conceive that they're telling the truth, so we just think it's a joke. But I've spoken to lots of people who, after the fact, after realizing what they were dealing with that the person told them the person told them right in the beginning i'm bad news you should leave me i'm terrible i'm a chameleon i, I have heard all of those things said by the sociopath to their partner and unfortunately what happens is because we have so little awareness of the sociopaths that live among us we can't conceive that somebody would actually do that. So we blow it off. You know, we, we don't pay attention. Um, if a sociopath, I mean, that should be actually a, a warning sign in, in, in big letters and flashing lights. If someone actually makes a claim like that about themselves and, and tells you that they're bad news, assume that it's the truth. Don't, don't assume that they're, you know, oh, nobody would really mean that. Yeah, they can. And yeah, they may be telling you the truth. So if someone volunteers the information that uh, they're bad people and will take advantage of you, I would say that's a good one to pay attention to. All right, what else do we have? Karen, my goodness, Karen, you had a good one. He would throw stuff at you. Throw stuff at you and make it sound like it was an accident. It accidentally left my hand and, and hit you in the head. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Okay, so Lisa says, Donna, I have been with at least four of these men, all the same but different. One worse than the other. How can I ever date anyone ever again? Lisa, um, what's happening is that you probably have a lot of emotional wounds um, because of all these experiences and then also because of prior experiences. You need to allow yourself to heal. You need to actually, more than that, not just allow yourself, but you need to make a commitment to recover from the wounds and, and really excavate out the, the negative energy that all these um, experiences have created that are all still stuffed inside you. Because that's what happens. You know, we, we have these experiences. Um, we, at the time, feel anger or disappointment or betrayal or grief but we're not very good at actually dealing with these emotions and what we tend to do is stuff them inside us so what needs to happen is that you need to actually allow yourself to experience and release these emotions now this is not fun it is not pretty but it's necessary and um my new book is out. It's called Recovery from a Sociopath. Uh, you can get it on lovefraud.com or also on Amazon. Um, it has a lot of information to help you go through the, this process. We also have several webinars that can help about this. But the key is that 
yes, you can recover, um, but it does take some work and you need to make a commitment to yourself that you're going to do the work and go through the process. And I, I guarantee you that you can recover. I know I did it. Um, my husband and I, and my new husband, not my sociopathic husband, he's long gone, but my new husband and I just celebrated our 15th wedding anniversary uh, last week. And, you know, we're still happy. We're still in love. Um, so yes, there is life and love after a sociopath, but you do have to go through the healing process to get there. So um, I hope you'll look into our other resources that can help you to do that. All right, what else do we have? Donna, what are your feelings now about Montgomery? Oh. Montgomery is my ex-husband that I just mentioned, my sociopathic ex-husband. Um, this man, for those of you who don't know my personal story, he took a quarter million dollars from me. He cheated with at least six different women during our two and a half year involvement. He had a child with one of those women. And then 10 days after I left him, he married the mother of the child which was the second time he committed bigamy. Needless to say, once I started to uncover everything that was going on, my head was spinning and um, I had a lot of pain to process exactly what I was just um, uh, saying to Lisa. Now, now he's just not part of my life. Um, I mean, he was, he obviously had a big effect on my life. Um, it was because of him that I founded lovefraud.com. So um, although you hate to give a sociopath credit for anything, um, he gave me a mission in life. And so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. But um, he's, he's just a, a memory at this point. Um, I, in, in all honesty, I don't even know if he's still alive. He's out of the country. I, um, I don't hear from him. I don't hear anything about him. So um, I don't know what's going on with him. Okay, so what else do we have? How do you know you haven't healed? Um... I guess it's easier to say, how do you know when you have healed? And when you have healed, there you just feel a, a peace inside you. Uh, you don't have a lot of worries about um, meeting up with somebody. You have confidence in who you are. And you just um, have a positive outlook towards life. Um, I, oh, I guess I could answer if, if if, you, you, if you're feeling afraid, if you're feeling worried about meeting people, um, if you're anxious about uh, possibly getting into a relationship, those are signs that you haven't healed. So wh when, you, when you feel calm, when you feel peaceful, when you feel optimistic, when you're just kind of going along, enjoying your life and, and you're not feeling desperate, um, you're just in a centered place and and when you're feeling that way that's when you know that good things can happen so that's the objective of the healing the objective is to get rid of the angst and to get rid of the pain and to get rid of um, all the worries and the misgivings and just to get yourself in a calm and centered place and from there anything is possible okay what else do we have Okay, L.E.K. says, whoops, how do you survive living alone after a sociopathic relationship when you are ex extremely codependent and depressed and have no friends or family? Um, let me address one of those items first, and that's the idea of codependence. Um, my colleagues and I have just published a paper in a scientific journal um, which is called Counseling Survivors of Intimate Partner Violence, Effective and Ineffective Interventions. 
And this paper came out of research that we did with love fraud readers. And essentially what we found is that a lot of people are seeking therapy because of their experiences and they're being told that they're codependent. Now, believe it or not, codependence is not an official diagnosis. It's not listed in the DSM-5, you know, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, where all the mental problems are, are listed. It, it's not included. It is not an official diagnosis. And the symptoms of codependency and also another uh, problem that often people get told that they have of self-defeating personality disorder, these um, symptoms that are associated with these concepts are also the same symptoms that are related to traumatic bonding. So a key thing to understand is that 10 to 1, you are not codependent. What, you, what has happened is that you have been traumatized by your experiences and the symptoms of the trauma look very much like what people say codependency looks like. So the way to start may be to realize that there's nothing wrong with you except for the fact that you've been injured by your experiences. So that's a good place to start. The idea that um, that it wasn't your fault because it wasn't, it, it's not, it, it, you probably are not codependent. You, what happened is you are traumatized because of what happens to you. So with, with that knowledge that it's not your fault, that something happened to you, it may give you the confidence to move forward and to start clearing out these ideas that there's something wrong with you, that you don't deserve, that um, you, you don't deserve to be loved. And, and that's the place to start. The place to start is to recognize that the reason you feel badly is because of what happened to you, not because of who you are. So from there, you start to work on processing the emotions and processing the pains. And, and you do have to do that. As I said to Lisa, you, you do have to do the work of emotional recovery. And you, you can do that no matter what your circumstances are. You can, you know, working on your emotions is free. You, you can do it yourself. So it, it's just a matter of setting time aside to do it and um, persevering because it does take time. Okay, what else do we have? All right, Flower Wolf says she has a situation that she wants to talk about. Well, um, I do offer personal consultations. If you want to contact me, we can discuss privately what your situation is. I'd be happy to do that. Um, All right, well, it looks like I got more comments here, but that seems to be the um, end of the questions. Uh, as I said, um, to those of you who may wanna talk about your own situations, uh, I do offer consultations. Just go to lovefraud.com and, and you can book an appointment. Um, and it's not that expensive. So um, I guess that's it for tonight. Uh, thank you very much. And we'll be here next week for Love Fraud Live. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.